the podcast in which one man strives to level up his geekhood and helping you do the same one battle at a time. <laughs> now, let's get geeky with Gamer Leaf. Legendary monsters that we grew up with have grown up themselves. And in Monster Dice, you become the kids of those legendary monsters. Going through the neighborhood, trying to collect the most candy on Halloween. In Monster Dice, you roll miniature figures shaped just like dice in hopes of collecting candy cards and being the one with the most candy. Sound familiar to you? Um, it didn't to me either, but that's the story of Monster Dice, a new game on Kickstarter. And tonight we're lucky enough to have on Brian Edwards, the creator mastermind behind the game. Is that correct, Brian? Is that how you fit in? I'm, I'm pretty much the mastermind. Cool, Bean. Thanks for coming on Getting Geeky with Game Relief. We really appreciate it. Um, so let's see here. Let's go back a little bit if we could. Um, how did you get into... Uh, board gaming. Are you into board gaming or just dice or what kind of games are you into? Oh yeah, absolutely. So um, with the rise of Kickstarter, probably back in, uh, I'd say 2013, I started backing uh, Kickstarter projects and I just fell in love with um, the uniqueness and helping support somebody's dream of, of bringing their, their unique ideas to the world. So I uh, set out on a journey to create a game myself, and uh, that's kind of how I got into more of the um, heavier board games. But uh, initially, I used to play games back when I was a kid, just like everybody else. Uh, some of my favorites include Jenga. Um, I also have a, a couple uh, more dexterity games um, from my, my mom used to bring out when I was a kid. Um, so these were games that she played. I'm not. I don't remember all the names of them. Uh, one of them was like Tiddlywinks and a couple other ones. I really liked games that um, seemed impossible the first time you played, or, or seemed very challenging. But uh, with a little bit of practice, you got uh, a lot better at them. So, how long did it take you to keep the tower up in Jenga? Then, if that's the case. Yeah. <laughs> how high? How high could I? How, how many times could I go until it fell? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I really like. Uh, I used to play Jenga with uh, my my parents when I was a kid, and then I I brought it to our table a couple times. But kids these days, they don't even have the uh, the attention span to even get the tower set up. So um, <laughs> I wanted to create a game similar to Jenga, and um, in Monster Dice, I have a collection of mini games, and many of them require. Uh, you to use really a uh, delicate hand-eye coordination. Cool. So what kind of um, so that, what exactly is Monster Dice before you get into the mini games? Okay. Yeah. So Monster Dice comes in a magnetic closing box that is pocket sized, so you can take it wherever you go. Um, I created uh, the game with uh, in mind. I did not want to have a board. One of the main features was that I wanted to have a game that. Uh, you didn't have to have a big setup. You could put it in your pocket, take it to the restaurant, play while you're waiting to eat. Uh, you can take it to your friend's house on a sleepover or just throw it in your backpack if you're a kid going to school. So I didn't want to have to have this game that opened up and, and there was a lot of setup to it. It's, it's a quick quick in, quick out uh, kind of game. So that's, that's basically what the concept started with. Okay, and the, they say something about mini games. That when I think of mini games, I think of um, what is it, Mario Party or something? Is that similar? Or? Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. So I have three kids. I'm a father of three, and yeah, they play a lot of video games and a lot of the stuff on the tablets and things like that. So I was kind of emulating like what they like to play in the digital space. I wanted to bring that out and create those quick, fast mini games um, to the table. So, you know, there's games in Monster Dice that require you to roll, obviously, because they're Monster Dice. But there's also games where you put your finger on the back of the monster and push down. And what that does is it flips the monster in the air, and you're trying to get it land it inside the box. I also have games where you stack the monsters on top of each other, 
and you put cards in between the monster tower, in between the stack of monsters, and then you try to take the card out of the, the stack by flicking it or giving a little swipe or even trying to pull the card out without knocking over the monster tower. So there's many games that were played. Um, I've been developing this game for over three and a half years, and I, I just started to come across these fun little games, and I wanted to keep them all. So I just kept on collecting them, and at this point on our Kickstarter, we have revealed four of the games, and there are many more to come as we draw closer to the end of the campaign, which ends on Halloween, which is like the theme of the game. Well, there you go. There you go. So let's see here. So why, um, let's see, I want to say I saw something about you're on, what is that, um, some kind of show or something regards toy, in regards oh, to toys? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So uh, I got this great opportunity to be on national television. I'm going to be on ABC this Sunday. So that's October 8th. I'm going to be on this Sunday, October 8th, 7 p.m., on ABC, it's the, the name of the show is called The Toy Box. And The Toy Box is what I refer to as Shark Tank for toys and games. So instead of me pitching my uh, game Monster Dice to like Mark Cuban and company, I pitched my game to five kids ages like age 8 to 12. Okay, so is it? Um, I, I I've heard people talk of Shark Tank. I'm not familiar with it. Is it kind of like uh, some kind of reality TV show where people get knocked off? Maybe like one of those singing shows or whatnot. Oh uh, yeah, kind of like that. So um, similar to Shark Tank, the Toy Box, uh, we are a competition show where a bunch of inventors that have created new toys and games for kids um, all came in hopes to have Mattel make our game. So we are on this show, and uh, we have a chance to even even still at this point we have a chance to to be picked up by Mattel and have these games produced, made, and sold at Toys R Us. Oh wow, wow! Will the Kickstarter hurt that at all, or how does that work? No, so yeah, the Kickstarter is all part of the plan. The Kickstarter uh, is is helping us to build the pre-orders for the game, and um, we're really hoping to get that support. Um, from the community and show that this is something that uh, really is, you know, what we want to bring to the market. And so, yeah, within within the within the show, we are allowed to to do this. And in you know, when the uh, when the finale airs uh, later this in the next m month and a half, um, it'll they'll reveal the grand prize winner. But then also. Um, last season of the Toy Box, there was the grand prize winner, but there were also two other contestants who weren't even in the finale uh, that also made it uh, to have their toys produced as well. Oh, wow. So do, are all the other ones doing Kickstarters as well, or are you the only one doing that? Or how, do you know? So yeah, yeah I, have a, we, I have a friend um, that I met out filming for the show, and she has a game on Kickstarter right at this moment, and her name... Uh, for her game is Mad Moves, and it's a crazy fun party dance game where you have crazy combinations of uh, of dance moves that you have to act out. Yeah, I think I saw that. It reminded me of one of those um, dancing things on the video games or whatnot. I forget what they're called, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, you have to you have to kind of do silly moves and, and hope that somebody guesses it. So, cool. yeah, it gets you out of your comfort zone with that game, yep. There you go. Um, so I, I don't know exactly when this will air, probably, hopefully pretty soon, but um, is this um, is there more than one episode, more than just this, the Sunday night episode? So, yeah. yeah, so there was an episode uh, last Sunday, um, and then my episode airs this Sunday, October 8th, and um, after that there will be some more episodes, and then it goes all leads up to the final where all of the uh, – the winners of each episode come together and the kids judge which toy will be uh, made and produced and sold in Toys R Us. Oh, so they, do they have, so there are actually kids judging them. Is there how many kids? So there's a total of 10 each. It's a rotating judge circuit. So there are five judges in each uh, panel. Wow. That's really cool. So yeah, that's really cool. It's like one of the, I want to think of Simon Cowell. I forget what his show is. Um, uh, yeah. American Idol, but for toys, it, maybe. 
Yeah, yeah, yep, absolutely. Well, that's pretty cool. So how did you find out about that, or did they contact you, or how'd that work out? Yeah, so um, so a little bit of background about me. I uh, have a part-time job where I teach kids parkour. If you're familiar, are you familiar with parkour? No, what is it? Can you tell us about it? Okay, so parkour is not a game. Parkour is real life where I teach uh, kids at a gymnastics gym how to become the next ninja warrior. So we, we teach kids how to run up the warped wall. We teach them how to do the quintuple steps, climbing, hanging, um, you know, all of those skills. And so how that leads into how I got on the show is I applied for a show back in the day called Wipeout. And Wipeout was a silly uh, show where you jump, you know, it's an obstacle course and you try not to fall into the water and wipe out. So I applied for that show and I didn't, you know, I didn't get on that or anything, but the same casting company uh, sent me an email and it said the toy box, a new invent, new show that showcases toy inventors and their, their toy inventions will be judged by kids. And I just thought, this is perfect. I mean, I've been working on Monster Dice for, it was like three years at that time. Um, and I had just kind of retooled the game to be um, really in line with the, the demographic for kids. So I really stripped it down to what is fun about dice and what's fun about, um, you know, these, these little mini games. And so I got on, uh, I auditioned for the show. They did a Skype and I uh, talked to him about that. They, they cut it all together. This was all the casting company. And then I heard from the producers, and um, they were like, let's get you on. We're ready to go. Oh, wow. So when they sent the email to you, did they already know you were creating a game, or that just was uh, that lucky? Was just, yeah, that was just really great luck on my part, for sure. Well, there you go. I guess everybody should create a game just on the off chance. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Cool being so what was the inspiration to coming up with Monster Dice or how did you come up with it? Okay, yeah. Uh, so the inspiration definitely spawned from my kids personally. Um, I wanted to create something that uh, got them away from their uh, tablets and devices for a minute and actually we got to play a real game with each other. You're not just playing against AI or tap, 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 <laughs> you know? So that was that was really the big one. I wanted to I wanted to create this game to play with my family, and from there, um, really how I came across monsters and, and monster dice was I worked for as a freelance uh, 3D modeler, 3D sculptor for a toy company called McFarlane. So they make um, Halo action figures, The Walking Dead. I've worked on both of those licenses before for them, creating the 3D sculpts for them, and then they. 3D print them and then go into mass production for it. And so when I was uh, working for them, those those type of freelance jobs are hit and miss. You have a job, get it done really fast, and then hurry up and wait for the next one, right? So I was in between these jobs, and my son was like, can you make a werewolf? And I said, yeah, of course I can make a werewolf. So I started sculpting this werewolf, and it turned out really cool. And I was like, you know what? My, my friend had just gotten a 3D printer, so I – asked him to 3D print it, and so we started to play with this little werewolf. You know, we had a real physical, uh, the physical thing that I had made on the computer brought to life, and I thought that was, I thought that was really cool. So once we started playing with the, the little um, monster, it wasn't actually a dice yet. It was actually, I'd say it was a marble with a flat bottom was basically what the idea of that that type of miniature figure was. Okay. And then, yeah, it evolved um, to slowly become Monster Dice. Cool. And you said you have three kids. Do they each have their own favorite mini game or? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So um, in the game, if you go to the Kickstarter page, you'll see a lot of the different games where you roll, flip, and swipe the cards out from between them. I created many of the games um, and, and honed in the rules and, and kind of worked with that. But my son actually helped design the game called Swipe Out. And in Swipe Out, that's the one where you build a tower of monsters. So you build this little tiki tower, uh, stacking the monsters on top of each other, and you put the candy cards in between the monsters. And uh, you have to actually flick the cards while not touching or making the monsters fall down from this big tower. And so he actually designed that because kids never play with uh, – a toy or game that you give them, they don't play the right way. You know, they play yeah. the way that they want to play. 
So, yeah, he was stacking them up and putting cards in there. And so I just challenged him, do you think you could take that card out of there? And he and he did it. And um, it was one of the most amazing um, facial expressions I've ever seen him do. It's one of those things where it looks impossible. You, you see this little challenge in front of you. It, it doesn't look like it's 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 really possible to do without knocking over the the tower and once you do it you just are like whoa like that was that i did that i felt pretty good about that so seeing his face pull that out and it, it was uh it, it really brought that game to the forefront and um you, you know so that's really like the second i'd say that's more of like a bar trick game you know like you, you got your your tricks that you show off to people um so that's that's a fun one for kids to challenge their friends or maybe they don't, they're not, they don't have any friends around. You can play this game solo and just see how high you can take the, the monster tower. Yeah. I was going to ask about that. Cause on the a Kickstarter page, it looks like they have a two tower and a, a, a tower with two and also with three monster dice. Can you go higher than that? I guess. Yeah. Yeah. If you have, um, so the, the, the base game comes with eight monsters. So you get the werewolf, mummy, vampire, alien, Boogeyman, uh, Vampire, I think I already said. Who else we got over here? Yeti, Ghost. I uh, probably said a couple of them. Frankenstein. So you have all these uh, miniature monsters um, as part of the box set. So you get eight monsters, 27 candy cards, and that all is held in this uh, pocket-sized uh, game box. And, um, yeah, so if you want to do the 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 – the challenge that I show on the Kickstarter video, that is eight monsters high with three cards in between those monsters that you have to somehow get out without knocking over the tower. Oh, it has – okay, I see. So, yeah, the monsters aren't as – so the, the one has four and then one has eight. Is that right? Yeah, so, um, yeah, you play, you play the game and you first – you accomplish that first challenge of just getting um, – oh, you're talking about how many um, – how many? How much is in the the, the box itself? You no, know, how many monsters are stacked up? Are they smaller than I'm thinking? Because I see it looked like two, and then it looked like three. But is there really more than I'm seeing? Yeah, it looks like maybe they're doubled. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, each one. Yeah, each one of those are cubes. So yeah, they're that, the the top the high, tallest tower is all eight monsters. Oh, okay, I was seeing a different. I wasn't looking at. I was seeing the monster is double. I apologize. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, that looks like a pretty fun one. Um, and then I really like the the flip them up, the flip them in. It reminds me of when I was a kid. Um, they'd uh, I'd never gotten into the folding, but people would fold like uh, footballs out of paper, and then you'd flick them over, uh, like make a field goal with your fingers and stuff. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Th this is this was that was really a big inspiration for me. Like having, um, you know, watching kids. I work at these two gymnastics gyms, and I teach kids all the time. And, um, you know, watching these kids make a game out of a water bottle, you know, this bottle flipping challenge thing they do. It's like you literally can make a game out of anything. You know what I mean? You have a half drink and water bottle and you, you created a game. And I, I found that actually pretty inspiring for whenever I started to redesign Monster Dice. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go to town and try to figure out how many different ways you can play with this game. How many different ways can you play? And still, our the main goal is collecting candy cards. How many cards will you collect at the end of the game? Who will have the most and be the winner? Cool, cool beans. Let's see here. Yeah, and do they glow in the dark too? Maybe. So yes, yes. So the main box set you can get for twenty four dollars, free shipping to the U.S. on the Kickstarter. You can also double down, and you get the main game plus this limited edition glow-in-the-dark version, and this one's super special. Um, these glow-in-the-dark monsters are half glow-in-the-dark and then half uh, standard purple resin. And so what this allows you to do is you can literally play, and I, I do this with my kids, you, pl you can play Monster Dice in complete darkness. So you could play it, you know, you just turn out the lights and play. Um, you can play it if you're going camping and stuff like that. You could still play because... Have, you would know when you're rolling it if it landed face up because the glowing side will be glowing and, and you'll 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 see it bright and loud and proud. Cool, cool beans. And is that the way you get for twenty four dollars or what's that one? So yeah, that's if you if you donate uh, forty eight dollars, you get both sets. You get the base game and you get this uh, the limited edition glow in the dark legendary deluxe copy.
Well, there you go. You can get a radio voice to say that. That's pretty cool. Cool <laughs> beans. Um, let's see. So besides Monster Dice, do you have a current favorite? It sounds like you like the Dexterity game. Do you have a favorite current game besides Monster Dice, of course? Yeah. Um, oh, like uh, somebody, else, somebody else's game, not one of yeah. these mini games. Yeah, yeah they, so, they, they might call me for cheating if I let you pick your own game. Yeah, you can, I can't pick my own game. Well, I do have a really special game in mind. I love Santorini. I backed this. That was like an instant back for me when I saw it on Kickstarter. And I, you know, I, I find the simplicity of that game um, and the beauty of all the components to be just something that... Uh, I can bring out when I have friends over in town and stuff, and even if they're not gamers, even if they haven't ever played um, anything but Monopoly, uh, this that game is really fun. They, you know, you play it and you think, you know what, I want to try again, and I think I think I know how to do this now. I think I know what strategy I want to want to use this time. You know, so there's something special about Santorini uh, for me, especially. Cool beans. What can you tell us about it? I want to say we backed it, but it ha we haven't got it to the table yet. Okay, for about Santorini. So, uh, first of all, it's just gorgeous. I mean, the production quality on that is something that I really aspire to uh, get. You know, to get whenever I, we're full production for Monster Dice. Um, so, that's the one thing. Really, just how how great it looks, just sitting on the table. It has this. Uh, um, elevated base so even the board that it sits on is raised up so it feels like it's on this cliff edge i mean it's really cool and all of the uh the pieces it, it, uh, the guy who designed it really thought about mathematically how the, how um how you could make something so simple and elegant um have so much depth i mean it, it's I, I could see people being very very good at this game um, I myself am, am decent. I, I beat my kids at it, right? You know. Well, there but, you go. Uh, yeah, that's always a victory for me when I beat my kids. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, I play my wife, and, and she'll sit there and think about her moves a little bit longer than I do. So, you know, she's she's more of a challenge. Um, but yeah, that, that's that's definitely my game, and I have to give a shout out also to Grim Slingers. Uh, Grim Slingers is a really fun story driven card game. And uh, me and my son really enjoyed it. I backed the expansion recently and, and excited to get that to add uh, and learn more about where the story goes. I think that's, that's a, one of my uh, favorite story-driven uh, games that I have. And that actually is my artist. The artist who made Grim Slingers is the same artist who has created the box art with these really adorable monsters uh, that you see. He also created the candy carts in the game. Um, so... You know, I, I got to give a big shout out to Steve Gibson. He he did a really fantastic job. Uh, it's not his style to make something as cute as the box art that I wanted, but he he worked with me and we we got it done. So, well, how did shout you go about Steve getting Gibson. him to be your artist? So yeah, I he, I backed his project on Kickstarter. I was uh, talking to him through Facebook Messenger, um, and I I was just like giving him some tips on how to you know where where we, you should put it out there get some get some promotion out there because uh, I was I've been big on helping other Kickstarters uh, you know hey man I love your project let's help you get it uh, get it funded and everything so once he was done with that I asked him like hey you know if you have any um, freelance opportunity like any 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 free time to do more freelance projects I would love for you to work on my game and he did and you know he, we started out, he did some, some initial concepts that were much more uh, brutal, more, uh, more monster and, and really dark. Um, and then we slowly shifted that theme into, into what, we, what we have here, which are the kids of those legendary monsters. Cool, cool, man. So, um, so there, you said talk of kids of legendary monsters. So is there something beforehand? Did you make something with just regu regular legendary monsters? No, yeah, did we uh, the the whenever I so initially I had a game uh, when I first made the monster dice I had this game that had special abilities and, and all these different powers and the problem that it ran into is playing playing it with my son and so I would play it with him and it fell flat in the terms of I'd I'd play a card that said oh you have to re-roll or oh no I get to take what you rolled and you have to take what I rolled so there were these like take that 
you know, oh, you you didn't, you're not doing so great. So the problem was is that the feeling that the original game, the original design of of the game came off was was uh, it didn't make you enjoy playing with the person, and so that was one of the reasons that 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 design was scrapped and uh, and and reborn into a a more you can't really blame anybody if you lose in, in these games. Like, uh, I'll, I'll kind of tell you about the newest game we just revealed today on the Kickstarter. I just went to one of my, my gymnastics gyms, and tonight was open gym. And so in open gym, all the kids come. They get to jump in the bounce houses, play um, on the trampolines and stuff like that. So I just went in the booths where they have uh, the uh, snack bar and stuff, and I played Monster Dice with them live feed on Kickstarter Live. Facebook Live to get kids, you know, reactions and reviews to the game live. And so I just did that tonight. I got back from it about an hour, an hour and a half ago. So you can see that on the Kickstarter. And um, and so yeah, that was that was really fun, um, an experience to kind of play the game with them. And uh, I forget what the question was, so I, I'm kind of leading off the astray here. Oh, that's okay. Um, but I was gonna. I, me too. I forget to have a bad memory. They, I think I had um, short-term memory loss before Dory on Finding Nemo did. So that's what I tell people, at least anyway. <laughs> yep. So yeah, going back to that um, live video, whatnot, I know um, some of my fans um, have asked, like, they want to know about other people who are doing Kickstarters and stuff, because some of them are going to be doing it. But um, how did that go down, or how did that work out, the whole Kickstarter live and whatnot? Yeah, so um, yeah, we you know uh, I'm a first time creator on Kickstarter, so you know it's it is a, it's rough going. If, if anybody says that it's hard to do a Kickstarter, they are undercutting it. They are definitely uh, telling you that it's hard when it's really daunting. Um, you're you're out there, you're putting out something that you've been working on for years. Most of these creators, um, maybe just you know couple months for some but most of these people have poured a lot of time and effort into the games that they've created and um so I, I'm, i've been on kickstarter since october 3rd and we are four days uh just almost four days so three and a half days into it and we are almost cresting that four thousand dollar mark and i have about 90 backers at this point which i'm super proud of um because again i can't wait for uh the toy box to go on air um, because one of the things uh, about the show is that once people see it, if they like it, you know, you expect some people to Google it, right? You know, hey, oh, Monster yeah. Dice, I'm going to go Google Monster Dice toy box or I'm going to go Google what is this Monster Dice game and where can I get it? You know, they want to know, you know, if it looks awesome to them, then they want to know how to get it. So I'm very excited this Sunday to have my game featured on national television and to see if that translates into traffic, uh, to Kickstarter. So we'll, we'll, you'll, you'll have to, you'll have to keep an eye on, on the Kickstarter, uh, Monday morning <laughs> on, uh, uh, this, uh, this, this Monday. Well, for sure. And, um, so let's see here. So people that um, maybe tune in after or whatnot, after you have that show, are, do you know if they'll be able to go back and watch it um, on their website or anything? Yeah, so, yeah, there'll definitely be the YouTube um, versions of the Toy Box that they'll release. And if you're, if again, I'll keep plugging it, but if you are if you go to the Kickstarter page for Monster Dice, you'll be able to, we'll be posting all that stuff. Um, uh some of the clips have been released already for some of the other inventors. Um, my stuff hasn't been shown yet, so I'm super excited to to see it all go down. It's going to be flipping awesome. Uh, like I said, I'm a parkour coach, so they definitely asked me to do a couple tricks. Oh, cool! On the show. <laughs> there you go. Cool. That's cool beans. And yeah, let's see here. So yeah, um, let's see. Yeah, that's really cool. I'm excited for that. That should be good. Um, what we'll the yeah, keep an eye can, on that. Yeah, you can definitely. Um, I, I know you can buy the stuff on Amazon. You can buy the episodes on Amazon um, Direct or whatever it is, and you'll be able to. You know, it sounds like this is going to be released after the show. So, uh, you know, if you want to check it out, um, the Toy Box Episode Two, Season Two, Episode Two. 
Cool. Yeah, I'll try to see what I can do, but I can't make any promises. I don't know how editing will go, but I can see if I can get it up tomorrow. It just depends. Um, now, let's see. The next yes. part of our portion of our show is called Adventures in Application Acquisition, where we talk about an application or whatnot. Um, I know you talked about your kids. This was to get them away from the application, but just to go back to the application for a minute, um, is there an application like either you or your kids use a lot of that we can talk about for a minute? Oh, okay. Yeah, so um, my my... My son is 10 years old, and he likes to do, like, FaceTime with his friends and just chat, like, after school. They'll, they'll jump on there, and he's got friends from uh, different schools and stuff like that, so that he doesn't get to see them at school. So he'll jump on FaceTime, and they'll be chatting away, and they play a whole lot of Clash Royale. I mean, they play that game day in and day out if, they, if, if, I'd, if I'd let them. Yeah, so my son really enjoys Clash Royale. He plays it with his friend while doing FaceTime and, and trying to uh, coordinate their attacks to do to happen at the same time. Oh, let's go to the left side. Let's go to the right side. And yeah, he got me hooked on it too. I I definitely have started to get into that game as well. It's really fun. Uh, it's got um, you know deck building in it. So you build your deck and then you place your um, cards on the battlefield and then they walk across. Um, kind of like tower defense a little bit where you're trying to destroy the other person's uh, castles. Cool, cool, Bean. So if you um, own the right to Clash Royale, what would be one thing you would do to make it a better application? Oh, that's that's a good question. Um, yeah, they do a lot of great things. They do leaderboards and they keep the uh, – they keep they, it's ad-free. Like I don't see any um, – I haven't seen any ads in it. So those are two really nice features. I – pretty much delete any ad or ad laden app that I get. If I get something and I see more than two apps or two ads in the app, it's gone. Uh, so that's really cool. I would say Clash Royale has uh, kind of a, a an easy intro. You start and you you build you're building up your your characters, they're leveling up and stuff like that. But there be, there co becomes a point in Clash where you you can no longer just grind it and get very far, and then that's where they make their money. You know, so there's a point where I can definitely see I'm getting higher levels, and now I have to spend a thousand coins just to upgrade my one troop to the next level. And um, and I can see like the even the next level up, it's like five thousand coins to just upgrade it. So I can see some you know games have to make money, right? But yeah. that's the one thing that I'd say. Um, there's going to be a point where I'm going to stop playing it because the fun is in the leveling up and in uh, obtaining new cards. And at some point I'm going to have most of the cards and I'm going to be at levels that are just really hard to get any higher. Okay. Well, you heard it here first on getting geeky with game relief. Um, what, let's see here, what Brian would do to make it a better application, um, but yeah, we know you got to make money and whatnot. But if you're listening later on, hopefully these are green episodes. If you're listening, that's something you can do to help make it a better game for a lot more people. So we appreciate that. And yeah, we won't want to keep you all night. But besides um, coming there, to, well, actually, no, I wanted to talk about one more thing. So uh, it looks like you're from Erie, Pennsylvania. Is that right? That is correct. Cool. Yeah, we almost ended up there um, after I got out of the Air Force a while back ago. And we and just noticed there's a lot of stairs, a whole lot of stairs. <laughs> yes. Yes, there are a whole lot of stairs. I live directly on Lake Erie. And um, so my uh, you'll see it if you, if you watch the Toy Box show. They actually came out to our place. Um, my parents, we run a, a, a hotel right on Lake Erie little mom and pop hotel. And so we have about 130 stairs that walk down the ravine and you can actually get right to the natural shoreline here at Lake Erie. So sometimes we have a beach, sometimes we just have a bunch of rocks, sometimes we have just uh, you know, uh, water crashing right up against the edge of the, the, the shoreline there. But it's, uh, it, it's, Stairs are fun to walk up and down. You know, I get to take my kids down there, and we get to go uh, swimming in Lake Erie. Um, Lake Erie is one of the Great Lakes, so when I, when you look out, you all you see is the horizon. You don't see the other side of the lake. It really looks and kind of feels like an ocean. And um, if you're ever in Erie, Pennsylvania, check out Lakeview Erie, LakeviewErie.com. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask if we could plug it, but that's the name of the hotel then. Yep, Lakeview on the Lake. 
cool. Like view area, cool. Cool beans. Yeah, we'll have to. We'll, and we'll make sure we leave show notes for all this for the toy box, for the hotel, for the especially for the monster dice Kickstarter yeah. and whatnot. Do it for true. the Kickstarter for sure. Yeah, I'm definitely trying to get any eyes on there and any shares. And uh, if if you have kids or even if you don't have kids and you think that this game is something that you want to play in between those heavier brain burning games, you know, those ones that really that really drain you and you just want to take a quick break. This is a a nice easy filler game that. You know, you could stop at any time. Like, if you have to get back to your other game, you can literally stop the, the, the all the mini games that you're playing, and whoever has the most candy cards at that point um, is the winner. So it, it's a, that's another really cool feature of the game is that it is a filler game, and you can stop, uh, you know, if if need be, and and see who wins right at that point. There there, there can be uh, you can take it as as far as you want and try to collect all the cards. Or you can you can uh, break off and, and get and go back to your other games or or eat your meal or whatever you're doing while you're waiting. Cool, cool beans and uh, minus the Kickstarter page. You're watching it on TV or even coming there to the hotel to stalk you in person. How would people yeah. go about finding out about you or Monster Dice? Okay, uh, yeah. So we have a website, uh, MonsterDiceGame.com. So Monster Dice Game. Is uh, an easy website you can check out right now. It's redirecting directly to the Kickstarter. So if you go to monsterdicegame.com, you will uh, be able to check out all of the cool things that are going on. Um, I'll even reveal it now. I'm sure you know some somebody. If somebody's listening all the way to the end of this uh, podcast, you are going to be excited about the various uh, giveaways and um, extra things that we're going to be doing once we're on the. The show and beyond, we have uh, a lot of exciting um, things planned for uh, for Monster Dice, for sure. Cool. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on that. That's awesome. And let's see here. So I forgot to ask, if somebody backs this, I know you're with the TV show and stuff and Mattel picking it up, but if somebody backs it, uh, when should they anticipate getting their game? I know you don't want to overpromise and under-deliver, though. Yeah. So yeah, we we padded the delivery um, on the Kickstarter. I think we have it for next year um, in like September. I think I, we have it listed on Kickstarter saying. So we padded the the thing pretty heavily. I wanted to give people, you know, I don't want to uh, fail on the delivery time. So I wanted to pad it a little bit. I I hope for a July release uh, of the game, um, and uh, that's you know that's my assumption of when when it will be fully uh, fulfilled. Cool. And will that, if Mattel backs it, will that change anything with it or not for the people who back it? So, yeah, that would, that would definitely, um, it wouldn't change, you know, it would, it would change a lot of uh, things, you know, in terms, cause I have all of the manufacturing, I've got all the quotes, I've got everything set up on my end to uh, self-produce this and make this game completely on my own. Um, yeah. If, if Mattel picks up, the game, which I really am hoping they do, uh, then the game will be produced, I believe, even faster. Because uh, you know, on the toy box, if your game is is the the winner, it actually you can actually buy that game the day after the finale. So the the grand prize winners game is boom right to shelves right away. And like I said last season, they had more than one. Winner. They had the grand prize winner, but there were two others that they didn't reveal until after the show had uh, had aired, and the grand prize winner had been revealed. Then they revealed two more that they were also producing, and one of them uh, was a Kickstarter even before it was on the toy box. So it had already been fulfilled their version of the game, and then Mattel had created a new uh, branded version of that game. So they, they redid the art and um, and, and did, redid the packaging for it. Oh, wow. Cool, cool. So um, can we – do you know what the names of the games were that were um, produced last year? Yeah, so Art Splash was the grand prize winner, and that is like 3D liquid art. It's like uh, you – it's like stencils, but you use water to color in the uh, on the paper. Very interesting, super inventive for sure. Um, uh, toy, not really a game. So then there was uh, on top of that, they oh, 
The one what's one noisy persons. That's the one that I actually picked up. That was the Kickstarter. Noisy persons was on Kickstarter a year before that, and they they had their project fully funded, and um, and and I believe produced and delivered that game. And then they went on to the show, showed them this copy of the game, and then uh, Mattel decided, let's do it. Let's add some better art, some more kid friendly cards and um and i actually have that game in our lobby at our little hotel here so uh, if anybody wants to play that game come on out and play it well there you go that's one thing i hope mattel if they do i hope you do win but i hope they don't mess with the art especially the the box cover art i like that with the three Dude, trick-or-treaters I, I really i really appreciate that yeah that was that was something that i really fought hard with uh, my artist to to get um because it is super i wanted i wanted uh, a lot of the game to revolve around kids not being afraid of monsters you know i wanted them to think like oh i am that monster i'm not fighting that monster but i have become these little monsters collecting candy yeah with our oldest kid we actually took um it was a mistake but when he was old enough to walk, I don't remember. I think he was just barely old enough to walk. I took him out trick or treat until we couldn't we couldn't walk anymore, and it ended up scaring him for quite some time. But yeah, so make trick or treating a little bit fun for people. Hopefully, absolutely. Cool. Well, yeah, yeah, we don't want to keep you all night, but we really appreciate you coming on, getting geeky with Game Relief, Brian. <laughs> well, thank you for having me. This was uh, this is my first podcast, so I'm really uh, excited to. Uh, do it with you. Well, there you go. Do you know if there will be any other podcasts coming up? So yeah, I've been I've been talking to a few other um, content producers, but I'm very interested in um, talking to more. Uh, I just love to get the word out about Monster Dice in any way possible. So if there are any other podcasters out there listening that uh, are interested in learning a little bit more about this game, and um, especially you know about the the appearance on the show, I think. You know, I'm I'm all I'm all ears. I'm I'm ready to hear from you guys. So they just contact you verse um, uh, via the uh, Kickstarter page, or what's the best way to get for them to get yeah. a hold of you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, check out uh, the Monster Dice Kickstarter page uh, again. MonsterDiceGame.com will direct you right to the Kickstarter, and um, yeah, just get in contact with me through there. You can direct message me um, or leave a, a comment in there. I also have a Facebook page. Obviously, everybody's got a you know Monster Dice business page and things like that. So you can always get in contact with me. I really, I'm really looking forward to hearing from uh, more content creators out there. Cool. We'll have to see if we can turn anybody your way. Well, yeah. Once again, thanks for joining us on Getting Geeky with Game Relief. We really appreciate it, Brian. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> Gamer Leaf levels up. Tune in next week to see if Gamer Leaf's luck holds up. <laughs> <laughs>